Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to F1 2021's story mode, Breaking Point. We're going to be covering chapters 1 and 2 in this video, where we start our journey with the Aston Martin team, which will actually be with Racing Point to start with in F1 2020. But before we even get there, we're here in F2 with Carlin, Aidan Jackson. We need to win this race. We're in Abu Dhabi, Yas Marina Circuit. If we win this race, we win An the F2 race. Championship. Look at it! Every driver is being so aggressive. Check it out! They'll all be feeling the pressure right now. None more so than young Aidan Jackson from Carlin. That's right. Rumors from the paddock talk about a possible future for Jackson in Formula 1. And with only a few laps to go, this is still anyone's race. The atmosphere here is electric, and we couldn't have asked for a better finish to the F2 season here in Abu Dhabi. Here we go then. Okay, Aiden, you're doing great. Keep focused. You know what to do. Copy that. Lap four of six. We are currently in fourth position. The objective, finish him first to win the F2 Championship. We've just set the fastest lap. Set a camera. Nicholas Latifi and Luca Giotto all in front of us. Just two laps after this one remain. Can we do this? Heading in to turns five and six. Okay, the gap behind is 3.3 seconds. The long hairpin. Turn seven. This could be our opportunity. If we get some good traction behind camera, we will get DRS in about 100 meters. It's the only DRS on the track for F2 as well. We're gaining. Gonna have to send it up the inside, I think. We've also got back markers in front of us. Ranga Nathan is next on the track. In front of them, Nicholas Latifi, who is our next target. Two and a half seconds up the road. So as I say, you've got five teams to choose from at the start of breaking point. Alpha Tauri, the one I choose, which is Aston Martin, which will start as racing point because the next part of the story actually takes us to the 2020 season. You can choose Alfa Romeo, you can choose Haas, or you can choose Williams. For this final race of the F2 season, you're racing for Carlin. Championships on the line. We've gone a little bit too deep. Through there, this final sector three. Lots of corners. Not much overtaking happens around here. I think the only way we're going to get these moves done is going to be in similar fashion. It's how we just took camera. If we can get close enough to Latifi through sector one and into sector two. Okay, you're creating some breathing space between you and the car behind by a few seconds per lap. That turns seven. Left-hand hairpin. It's got to be key. Through turn three. Into four. Coming into five and six. Just got to get close. Nothing silly. We're in a good position so far. Oh, we slowed there. Yeah, we've got nice position here. Just need good traction. Get on the power. DRS. 100 meters away. I think we got this one sewn up already. Latifi doesn't have DRS on Giotto. And of course, Giotto isn't going to have DRS either when we catch him. Unless there is another back marker that he can utilize for DRS. Sail past Latifi. Just over a lap remaining to get one more position. One lap, one position. The destiny of F2 Championship glory. And moving into F1 as a rookie. But as the F2 champ is a huge positive and tick in my book. The slower Sector 3. Turns... What are we here? 16, 17. 17, a lot better than last lap. 18 and 19. Probably a little bit too cautious. Probably could have carried a bit more speed through there, but I don't want to make a mistake. We are closing in on this championship. Now, for your information, 
just so you know, I, I'm playing this on a PC, uh, but I'm also utilizing the Fanatec F1 wheel. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Thank you, engineer, for the final lap call. Uh, and the Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase, which is for PS4 and PC. Uh, on top of that, I'm actually playing within a uh, F1 play seat. If you've followed my social medias, my Twitters, Instagram, you've probably seen plenty of photos or videos of those over time. Not upgraded, still using it for this. I love that setup. The Fanatec wheel and pedals are brilliant. And look where they've got me to in this position. Oh, a little bit of dirty air causing us a loss of traction. But DRS is here. Sector 1 was purple. We just need to utilize the slipstream. Pull out, and we're sending it. Hold the inside line. He could look for the cutback. He's fighting this. He's right on our tail. There is no second DRS, though, in F2. If we can get through this straight and into turn 11, 12, 13, still ahead. Oh, he was looking at a dive down the inside, but he thought better of it. Just got to get through here. And I think we're good. No, no one's passing through here. Here we go, just about five corners left. Before we are crowned F2 champion. Here at the Yas Marina circuit, Abu Dhabi. Final race of the season. Oh, this feels good. The first part of Breaking Point, F1. 2021's story updated a terrible second to last corner but it doesn't matter Giotto can't capitalize on it feels like we're just going so slow we're over the line victory fantastic work Aiden great drive mate congratulations is ours yes come on and he's done it Jackson's done it Aiden Jackson wins the F2 championship what a win for Jackson! What a win! And he couldn't have gone to a better driver. A magnificent result. He's already been vocal about his dreams of one day driving for Mercedes in Formula One. Let's just hope the right people are watching today. And here he is, the man of the moment, Aiden Jackson. An amazing race and a fantastic win for this incredible driver. Indeed. After this, I guarantee that Jackson will be the hot topic in more than a few upcoming F1 team meetings. The future's definitely bright for this young driver. Here we go then, we're off to the Australian Grand Prix, several months later. Aiden, now you've made the leap to Formula One, no surprise to anyone who's been watching your career. How does it feel to be on the verge of getting behind the wheel for your first race? To be honest with you, Will, it hasn't really quite sunk in yet. The team has given me a fantastic opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime, a dream come true. So to answer your question, I feel like a little kid. I look around and I'm surrounded by my heroes, you know? I've even had to pinch myself a couple of times. So Esteban Ocon, yeah, Lando Norris, heroes. It can be a bit overwhelming, but out on the track, the speed, Good one, Aiden. the noise, even the smell. It's all the same. I just hope my driving is too. And what about Casper Ackerman? Are you intimidated at all having such a seasoned and experienced driver as your first teammate in Formula One? How's that relationship coming along? I've always looked up to Casper as someone to aspire to. Growing up as a kid, his pictures are all over my bedroom walls, you know? The dream was always to be Casper. But, as it turns out, I'll be racing alongside Casper, which is good enough for me. I get to learn from the best. Besides, every legend has to start somewhere, right? Aiden, just wondering if we can get your reaction to the obvious comparisons that are being made between you and another F1 driver. Much like you, he made the transition from F2 to F1 last season. What do you say to the press here, and to your fans, who are calling you the new Devon Butler? Go on, Devon Butler. The new Devon Butler. I'm alright with that. 
Does that mean we can lose the old one? <laughs> oh, is this the start of the tension? You come over well. They like you. I don't know what you were worried about. Thanks. You know, everything's going to be fine out there today. I just know it. Just do what you did in F2. Easy. Simple, right? Thanks, Brian. I won't let you down. Brian looks like a right legend. <sighs> Come on, Aiden. You've got this. So we've got Casper Ackerman as our teammate. Okay, so here we go. We've got a uh, news feed, social email as well here. So this is giving us all the updates as to what is going on in the world of F1. Hamilton set for potential title. F2 world champion moves up in the world. Hello, that's me. Oh, we've got the phone ringing as well. Oh, it's Brian. Hello. Aiden, are you in your room? Oh, hey Brian. Yeah, I'm in my room. Good. Well, have a look around. I hope you like it. Should be everything you need in there. News feeds, social media. Hey, you're hooked up to the lot. Just do me a favour, eh? Go on. Make sure you check your emails. I think there's a message in there for you. Oh, right. Thanks, Brian. Take a breather, do what you need to do, and I'll see you before the race. Nice one. So what more and Jeff giving us an update? Casper as well, helping me out there. I do love that social element and looking at Twitter. Uh, here's a little sneaky secret for you. You may see me in those Twitter feeds when you play this. What a brilliant Australian Grand Prix this has Just been. saying. But there's still plenty of Keep time for more drama. There certainly is, Crofty. And these two have been fighting each other incredibly hard so far. They don't want to go tripping over each other, though, because Devon Butler is coming up from behind. He's on the attack, too. Here we go, then. Casper's not your priority. We need you to defend. It's OK. I've got this. Famous last words. Devon Butler is going to cause issues. Oh, no. Oh, no. He'll be fine, he's heading for the pits now. You just concentrate on the race. And there we have it. So I'm sure there's going to be fireworks in the Racing Point garage this evening. There will be, Crofty, for sure. Look, it was a late move from Devon Butler, but you never want to see two teammates make contact. And Ackerman will surely be seething at that one. Absolutely. And I'll tell you who else isn't going to be happy too. Aidan Jackson. Not how his F1 race debut should have gone. Probably not the best way to start your relationship with your teammate but here we are lap 11 heading to the start finish straight there's five laps of fuel remaining as we move into lap 12 Devon Butler the man that caused the issue he's even pushing me over there okay we've managed to get past him I think yes we managed to hold him off Ackerman was down in 13th we're just going to make the most of what we've got now Next up the road, it's Norris, 1.8 seconds, then Albon. Can we keep Devon Butler behind and at least get one championship point in our first race? Whatever the outcome is with the... Our gap behind is 1.8 seconds. The crash with Ackerman, I'm sure we'll find out after this race. Not getting much closer to Norris at the moment. Let's just keep pushing as fast as we can as we go through 11 and 12. Moving into Sector 3. No DRS for us. We do have our overtake button though that will give us a little bit of a boost. If we can just get close enough going round the final two corners. 15, taken well. 16, could have been better. We've got DRS. We've got the overtake button on. Norris has got no chance. He's going to defend. Okay, you're in the no, top he's not even going to defend. We've literally sailed past. Nope, I tell a lie. He is, he is defending. He defended the inside. Nearly came back to us, but we've managed to keep DRS. And Norris. Sorry, Lando. You're down in 10. Next up, it's Albon and Gasly.
So we managed to catch up to Albon and Gasly. Albon getting Gasly. But we just couldn't make up any more places. And it's Lewis Hamilton with the victory. We come home ninth place in our first race. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. The question is now. Another superb Australian Grand Prix comes to an end. And it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Is what's going to be the reaction from the team start to the season this has and been Ackerman. A fascinating race here in Australia at. The top teams as ever continue to push the boundaries of the sport. And it'll be interesting to see how the new racing point driver, Aidan Jackson, settles in. Especially after that early incident involving his teammate. Well, we've certainly seen rivalries born from less. Suffice to say, if you came into the 2020 season hoping for a bit of drama, it looks like you won't be disappointed. Yep, <laughs> we are definitely causing drama. Casper, listen, I don't know what happened out there. It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it then? Who was the idiot behind the wheel of your car? Hmm? Blame Devon Butler. You're pathetic. You won't even admit when you made a mistake. I'm. How did they ever sign you? He's definitely not happy. Oh, Butler. There he is. Um, Devon, I didn't see that. I what, like, out on the track today? You nearly took me out, mate. Look, I don't know what happened. You cut in, I swerved. Next thing I knew, Casper was out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mate, I was nothing to do with it. Whatever that was, that was all on you. Don't be trying to pass the blame, because you haven't sailed in yet. You've got to love Devon Butler. Everyone's favourite villain. Sorry, Aiden. Just bear with us one sec. No problem. You seem to find your feet quite quickly after you graduated from Formula 2. What advice would you give to Jackson in his first season? Well, stay out of my way mostly. <laughs> and uh, taking out your own teammate isn't something I would make a habit of. He loves to stir the pot, doesn't he? Just checking audio levels. Uh, sure. Seriously, Casper must be wondering what on earth Racing Point were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Devin. Yeah. I still love him, though. Okay, Aiden. Let's talk about that incident with your teammate. Well, there we go. Team Tussle at Racing Point is the key message. On our news side, uh, Devon Butler's back. Everyone loves a bit of Devon. Brian's on the phone. Uh oh. Brian. Talk to me. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Listen, what happened out there today? I had it all under control and then. Look, let's not go through all that now. We'll talk about it at the debrief. Right, yeah. I was actually talking about your little running with Casper and Butler over in the paddock. Oh, wow. News travels fast. The paddock talks, Aiden. Besides, I've got ears like a hawk. Listen, Butler's a clown. The man's ego is bigger than a... No, I've got nothing. Don't give it a second thought. Thanks, Brian. The Casper? <laughs> yes, yeah, so he can get a little hot-headed, especially after a race. But you have got to work with him. That manoeuvre today... Wasn't my fault, Brian. It probably cost us points. I'll level with you. A lot of people on the team are disappointed, Aiden. And I'll be saying as much to Casper. Now, learn from it and move on. But you can't let it happen again. I'll see you at the debrief. He's right. You've got to live with it. One month later, and we're at the Chinese Grand Prix. It's the Chinese Grand Prix here in Shanghai, and this track fast becoming a rookie's favourite. Alex Albon, remember him from last year? A brilliant race in his debut season, and it looks like Aidan Jackson's continuing the trend. He really is, Crofty. He's showing great promise so far this season. Well, here's Ackerman now going up behind his young teammates. And the rumour in the paddock, Crofty, is that the tension's building between these two. Let's see what happens here. Here we go. Ackerman's going for it. Down the inside of the hairpin. He's bashed his teammate off the track. What are you doing? 
Casper, what the hell? Looks like Jackson's really struggling to get over that. OK, Ada, keep it focused. Concentrate. That brush with his teammate clearly affecting the young driver. It looks like it has, Crofty. I can't see any significant damage to that car, so he's going to have to pull himself back into this race. Well, is that a bit of payback, then? The car's looking OK, Aiden. See if he can recover a few places. What was that all about? You can recover, Aiden. That's not OK. That's really not OK. OK, so objective is to recover to 10th place before the end of the race. Six laps, currently sat in 14th, Norris and Ocon in front of us. It's time to make one of those positions up right now. DRS is open. Overtake button is deployed. Norris is defending the inside. We are going to go the outside. Outbreak him. Hopefully get it stopped in time as we take it through turn 14 and 15. Into the final corner. The left-hander onto the start finish straight. Get more DRS. No, we won't get more DRS because we're not within a second of Ocon, but that is a second DRS zone. So we've definitely got a feisty relationship on our hands. Devon Butler getting involved in Australia, here in China. Ackerman just wasn't having any of it. He just wanted that position and was going to take it no matter what. Will we see him back on the track anytime soon? Will we be able to catch up to him? Just got to put in some solid lap times. That's way too wide there, though. But we managed to get, keep it close. Maybe I'm finding the new racing lines. Honestly, don't try my racing lines. Again, I think it's going to be that Sector 3 back straight. As we go around this long turn 13. Get the overtake button de deployed. We've also gone through the DRS detection zone, which means we're going to get DRS... And Ocon shouldn't, which should give us even more chance to pull away. We're up to 12th. Ackerman is 10th. Four and a half seconds up the road. We've also got some back markers to deal with before we get to Carlos Sainz, who is, of course, in the McLaren still in this season. Okay, Magnussen dealt with. Back straight once again. Lap 10 of 14. Once we clear signs, Ackerman is next up the road. Looking for exactly the same move that we pulled on Lando to his teammate. And we've made it stick. Okay, good work. Great pass. Here we go then. Game on, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta play the team game, though. Can't do anything stupid. Can't look to take him out. We need to get past him clean, safely, but also quickly. Because don't want to give him the chance to really fight this one. The way he fought that overtake initially, he's probably going to fight the defensive as well. Sweeping turn seven left hander. Seventh gear down to fifth. Then down to third. That's a better line for that corner. Still not perfect, but it's better than the last time we went around there. Again, we just need to get close through this last section here. For turns 11, 12, and 13. Onto that back straight. The gap behind us is 1.8 seconds. Oh, we've got this. Just nail the overtake button. We've got plenty of overtake available to us. Not going to dive through and make anything, any stupid decisions. It's now. We've got DRS. We've got the overtake. He's fighting this so hard with his overtake as well, you can tell. DRS is open. He's going to try and slip in behind us and try and take us back, but no, we can outbreak it. Oh, we nearly outbroke ourselves. But we're through. We're into the points. Albon and Butler next on the list. 
DRS. Once again. You're in the top ten. On the start now. finish straight. Are we gonna have Alban this early? No, we are not. He is not letting this place go. Oh, it's, this is cheeky. This is cheeky. He's gonna look for the cutback because I've gone wide. Giving him the space. Oh, we've got the job done on Albon. Although he is coming back at us. That Red Bull is quick. But to be fair, we all know that Red Bull should probably be higher up. In this Chinese Grand Prix, we've got Fiat in 7th, Butler in 8th. Now we are ninth. Here we are then, coming through the final part of lap 12. We've caught up to Devon Butler. We're going to have DRS on the start finish straight, but we also know how dirty Devon Butler can be, but I think we've managed to get him at a point on the track where he can't really do anything too dangerous for us. And we've slipped past him. Eighth place. Fiat's Alpha Tauri and Vettel's Ferrari are the two in front of us. The long straight, it's the perfect opportunity to pass. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Again, DRS overtake button. Fiat moves to the outside. We're doing that same move once again. Braking got that sorted as well there. Got the car stopped. Got it turned in. And here we go. We're on to the last lap, ladies and gentlemen. After this... Here we go. Start, finish straight. This is the fastest lap of the race as well. Lap of the race. I'm not sure we're going to catch Vettel. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. The final lap. The final corner. Seventh place. Valtteri Bottas. Okay, gets the victory. And bring it home. But after the issue with Ackerman... We've recovered well, and we've managed to get some more well, points for the team. Well, digest there, and a little bit ominous seeing the two Racing Point teammates make contact again. Things don't look stable between these two drivers, Crofty. They've barely been teammates five minutes. That wheel bump, could that have been avoided, Ant? Yeah, it looked like Ackerman was making a bit of a statement to me. He's certainly not given Jackson any room. A sign of things to come? Well, for their sakes, let's hope not. That wraps things up here in China. Until next time. Casper. What the hell was that? You nearly put me out of the entire race. Bumping wheels like that, you could have put us both into the barrier. Casper. Come on, man. You... I have to make a phone call. Casper. Ackerman! Mom. Cancel the TV subscription. The entertainment is right here. Oh, come off it. Do you really have nothing better to do? By now? No. <laughs> and why would I want to miss this? You two, you two are like characters in a badly written sitcom. He wanted your lot to sign Ricardo, you know. Ask anyone. What do you mean? The paddock talks, mate. And so did Ackman. Should have heard him last season. He didn't care who he talked to, and he was always going off on one about you. He tried to stop them from signing you. He didn't want to play babysitter. Oh, he did, did he? Everyone knows. Uh, have you not seen the way that people look at you? We all feel sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. You want my advice? Prove him wrong. <laughs> Chin up. <laughs>